back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I did not expect us to be talking about this again so soon, but pop culture had other plans, so obviously we just have to go with it. We have to talk about Jojo Siwa again. If you're tired of her, I'm sorry, but she is literally everywhere, so we have to discuss. Last week, not to be confused with the episode we did two weeks ago, but last week we discussed the new song and music video that she dropped and the absolute mayhem that it caused online, rightfully so, because it is absolutely wild. It's her new like transition, maturing into adulthood, all of that stuff. And then shortly after, people online uncovered something about her song. She didn't write it, which in the music industry is actually very normal. But what happened next was completely out of the ordinary and we have to discuss it. Before we do though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and then ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. All right, so all of this really went down on TikTok, of course, because people on TikTok can find and uncover literally anything. They are better than the FBI at this point. So just watch this video. This is the first one that I saw. Karma's a Bitch is a song recorded by Brit Smith in 2012. It was going to be released as a single and was teased many times, but eventually ended up getting scrapped. The song was also originally recorded by Miley Cyrus in 2011. 12 years later, the song was released by Jojo Siwa. So guys, that little teaser that I just played you in the background of that TikTok, that is not Jojo singing. It can't be my whole f***ing flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! It's obviously the same song, but that is not her. It just went through multiple iterations before it finally landed in Jojo's lap. And it's all so funny because do you guys remember from last episode, all of that talk about Jojo wanting to emulate Miley Cyrus? She was in her bangers era, just like Miley was. Like, here's a clip. I was like, this is, this is what I want. This, she is my number one idol. I was like, I want to do what she did with bangers. I want to have that moment. She wanted to have that moment. She wanted to be Miley Cyrus. So what did she do? She went back and she got a song that was originally written for Miley Cyrus back in 2010. And Miley Cyrus apparently recorded it, but then passed on it. And then a different singer, Britt Smith, who we heard in that TikTok, recorded it in 2012. And then her team said, uh, I don't really know if that's the right song for you. So she ended up recording and releasing a different song and then left the music industry. And through the power of TikTok and maybe some leaks from people in the music industry, people on earth the unreleased version by Brit Smith, who left the industry, like I said, and literally pulled her back into the limelight 12 years later. Somebody commented and said, so it really just is JoJo because it being sung by Brit Smith makes it sound so amazing, honestly. Like those riffs in her version are insane. I was talking with my team. Some of them do not like that version as much as I do, but I love early 2000s pop like JoJo, not JoJo Siwa, JoJo the real JoJo, the one that I like. Like that kind of music, it is so fun. Another person said, I'm gonna invent a new type of music with this song from 2012. Yes, y'all remember her saying that she was going to invent the gay pop genre? Called gay pop. She needs to come down to earth just a little bit. It's an old song, it's an old genre. We're just recycling at this point. Now, obviously there were critics about this. One guy said, I think this is AI generated. Can't find anything about it posted on the internet before yesterday. Not a Vimeo, but it's a little sus to me. But guys, within days, Britt Smith, like I said, pulled back into the limelight. She was taking interviews and y'all, she is good. She is a class act. She has been media trained. Watch this. From what I understand, you actually recorded this song back in 2012? Yes, yeah, back in 2012. So it's a shock to me that it's got a new life, which is amazing. But yeah, with um, Rock Mafia back in the day, it was Those supposed the to be my first single. Um, and just sort of, things changed and I went with provocative um, instead. That just makes me so sad because she's sitting here 12 years later, somebody else is singing the song that she really wanted to release. Her team said no, obviously can't change that. It's not JoJo's fault at all. JoJo is not in the wrong in this sense, but it does make me hurt for her because 12 years later, she's like, ah, oh, that like I worked so hard on that song. She did an amazing music video. She teased it on her social media, never let her release it. But then this is where it gets interesting because they kept trying to pit her against JoJo and she just never let it happen. Watch. You know what's so crazy? A lot of fans are saying that you did the song better than JoJo. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? That's very nice of them to say. I'm just, I feel like it's just a testament to how strong the song is itself that it stood the test of time. Nice, do you think JoJo did it justice? <laughs> the woman's like, please, please give me something spicy. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's nice to hear different interpretations of it. Um, I was, you know, attached to my version, but it's nice to hear. She's so uncomfortable, but she seems so sweet and people have now fallen in love with her. Somebody commented and said, the way TikTok said, you will find the original and appreciate it, and that we do. Somebody else said, I love her, OMG, her song is listenable. <laughs> 
Sorry, JoJo. Somebody else said it took 12 years to become an overnight success and we are all here for it. Somebody else said, JoJo said that they wrote 11 versions or something like that, LOL. Why doesn't she just come out of the gates and say that it's a song being reimagined? Well, because then it wouldn't be about JoJo. And I think that that is a requirement for everything that's going on right now. Anyway, but if I was on JoJo's PR team, I would immediately jump on this with grace and gratitude, maybe offer some insight into the music industry because people are claiming that she stole the song. She did not steal it. I'm sure her lawyers were involved. She got the rights to it. She bought the rights to it. That's how it works. She could clarify that and how artists buy their songs. Give Brit a shout out because obviously people are talking about her. They're comparing her. It could be a nice moment. But no, she called the paparazzi on herself and she said this. Background on Karma, honestly, it's an old song. I was pitched it. I loved it, was obsessed with it. So I, I grasped onto it. Why not that instead of a new song? No, there's that's a very normal thing. Was it supposed to be Miley's song? Rock Mafia has done some of the best hits. Like she just completely avoided the question. It was written for Miley Cyrus. Also, you desperately want to be like Miley Cyrus. Why don't you just say, yeah, that's awesome. I think that's so sick that I got a song that's from Miley Cyrus. I would be stoked about that because anybody that's writing a song for Miley Cyrus that she recorded, I'd be like, oh yeah, that is awesome. That's a winner. Don't You don't need to avoid it. It just seems absurd. Was it originally Miley's? I don't know. You don't know. You do know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Did you steal it from Brit Smith? I did not steal anything. <laughs> There's no such thing as stealing. Yeah. I also don't know who Brit Smith is. Oh, okay. All right. She sung it before you, apparently. And it's been going viral online. Clearly not that viral, because I haven't even seen it. <laughs> Somebody commented and said the way that she was avoiding the question. Like, yeah, all you had to say was, yes, they wrote it for Miley Cyrus. I feel like I'm at a similar point in my career where I'm trying to make a transition. It was a good fit. It was awesome. Glad to bring a song back that never made it out into the world. That's all. And I would have been like, sick. Good job, Jojo. Good pick. That seems like it's very apropos, but no, she didn't do that. Like at this point, Jojo, I just think maybe you're tired. You have been working overtime promoting this album. Whatever you are doing is just making it worse. Maybe just take a step back, go home, take a nap on your new Helix mattress, and you will get the best night's sleep of your entire life. You will wake up refreshed and ready not to make PR errors like this. Now, there is just something truly magical about my new Dusk Lux Helix mattress. It is like I discovered a whole new realm of comfort and rejuvenation. Like imagine sinking into a cloud every time that you lay down. That is the sensation that Helix provides and that you guys deserve. Helix has harnessed years of extensive mattress expertise to offer a truly elevated sleep experience. And if you have not already checked out their new Helix Elite collection, you need to. This collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. And if you're nervous about buying a mattress online, which I was, you do not have to be because Helix has you covered with their sleep quiz, which is an innovative feature that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress, eliminating the need to settle for a mattress designed for someone else. I took the Helix quiz back in the fall and it led me to their Dusk Lux mattress, which was a perfect match for my needs. Plus Helix has has a 10 year warranty and you can try it out for hundred nights risk free. They will even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I guarantee you will. On top of all of this, their financing options and flexible payment plans ensure a great night's sleep is never too out of reach. So if you are ready to have the greatest night's sleep of your entire life, go to helixsleep.com slash Brett and you will get 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Again, that is helixsleep.com slash Brett. This is their best offer yet and it will not last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now, which I think we all need after enduring this JoJo Siwa drama for the last three weeks. Somebody else said, there's no such thing as stealing. She's something. Yes. Yes, we know she's a lib. Just kidding, but not kidding. Somebody else said, clearly not that viral. Okay, girl, I was trying to give you a chance. Brit Smith all the way, clogging my For You page, and I love it. Like, seriously. And granted, none of us knew who Brit Smith was before this, but I guarantee they told you who wrote the song, who it was for, who recorded it before you, and if they didn't, you should fire those team members because they didn't set you up for success. And you should know all of these things about a song that you are recording. But if JoJo did know who Brit Smith was, then that was just a low blow. It was unnecessary. And I think Brit Smith and her team might have taken it personally. Somebody commented and said, how crazy would it be that JoJo made an artist come out of retirement? Well, she certainly did. Because somehow, some way, Brit Smith's version of Karma was released, finally, 12 years later. And now it is charting above JoJo's, which is just so savage and honestly shocked me. Somebody said, y'all, you can literally not make this up, but Brit Smith is actually getting her lick back. I am cackling. Here she is at number six on iTunes and Karma is sitting at 87. I'm so sorry, Jojo. I'm so sorry that this is happening to you. She is also 
charting on Spotify. Like, this is just a sick joke. She also gained over 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify overnight. When I checked last week, when I first saw this, I think that maybe she had like 50 monthly listeners because she only ever released one song. Like, this is wild. Somebody said Brit Smith had the opportunity to do the funniest thing and she did it. Now, to be fair, I don't know if she did this personally or her old team who owns the masters to her music did this, but it's just a hysterical and wild turn of events. And rightfully, a lot of people online were wondering how this was even possible because JoJo bought the rights to the song. People thought that Brit Smith would never be able to release hers. But this creator, Jonathan Miller Music, broke it all down well. It was super informative. I learned a lot from it. Let's see what he has to say. Technically speaking, Brit Smith's version, although she made a music video and did all the production and it was officially recorded, it was never officially released. Rock Mafia, which is a production team that used to exclusively work with Hollywood Records artists, like Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, so on and so forth, after a period of time, they retained ownership as the songwriters of Karma. JoJo and her team purchased those recording rights and rights to distribute the song. And that's important because JoJo did not buy the whole song. She did not buy it fully from the songwriters, from the publishers. She just bought the rights to be able to record it and distribute it. They still are going to make money off of JoJo releasing the song. And then she and her team officially release Karma. While not the original recording of Karma, it is the first officially released version of Karma. Meaning that Brit Smith releasing the original version version of Karma that she recorded in 2012 has technically been released, I'm assuming, as a cover. Basically, all she would need is for Rock Mafia to say, yeah, go ahead and release it. So that's where it gets interesting because Rock Mafia obviously has to have a hand in this somehow. Maybe they're like, we want to make double on this song that's just been sitting here for 12 years. But it's not just Brit, I don't think. I don't think she was sitting here and like, let me just upload to YouTube. There's something at work behind the scenes. But whatever happened, I love it. It's fantastic content for me. Top 10 pop culture moment, as that guy said. Somebody commented and said, this shows the level of petty that we collectively are as a generation. Truly, completely agree. Somebody else said, the funniest for me is that Jojo claimed that Karma has a lot of versions that she and her team did and pitched, and yet the difference is so minimal. And this just makes the story so much funnier to me because we've seen all the interviews now of Jojo, and she's talking about how she's been working on this song for two years, and she's changing the lyrics, she's innovating it, she's massaging it so that it fits where she at in her life right now, apparently that might have been BS because it sounds just like Brit Smith's version. Bridge, whole different bridge. The bridge basically the whole time was one note and it was really cool, but then we were like, but what if it kind of had this, you know, little bit of flow to it? Just seriously guys, just like pause, take a second, go listen to Brit's song, obviously it's out, and then go listen to JoJo's it's basically the exact same. Like with that bridge that she's talking about here in the TikTok, maybe she changed it in one of the recordings that she did, but what she ended up releasing was the exact same thing that Brit did in her music video, even though JoJo is apparently saying that she is the one that came up with that and created it. I just, just go listen. The song does sound like a 2010 record. It does, and that, that was the goal, but there was a point in time where it sounded a little too 2010. Well, obviously it was gonna sound like a 2010 record because the song is from 2010. Now, I don't know if she was specifically talking about the other versions of the song that she recorded herself, that they innovated and changed over the last two years, but whatever she ended up releasing was almost identical to what Brit Smith did. The only thing that she really changed was obviously the music video and the interpretation, but she changed one lyric. Brit Smith said, I should have never messed around. JoJo said, uh-uh, I'm an adult now, I'm gonna be spicy. I should have never effed around. What? Like that is the lyric <laughs> that apparently she spent two years changing. I don't know, guys. It's so funny because it is the same song, which again, to be clear, is fine. That is normal. It happens all the time in the music industry. A majority of singers do not write all of their songs. But the reason why so many people are upset with JoJo is because of this charade that she's kind of put on where she evaded questions about the origins of the song, alluded to her actually writing it, said that she was inventing a genre that already exists with the song, etc. Like if I was gonna say anything to JoJo, I would just say, you already have a huge fan base. You have millions of people who have been following you for years for you. Just be JoJo. That would have worked just fine. Be honest. Now, this is sort of an aside, but I want to fit this in. This creator on TikTok posted about how she would have handled this new era of JoJo and would have handled this transition into adulthood. And it is so good 
And it makes me upset on behalf of JoJo's fans because they missed out on this. Just look at this. It's a swipe through, but she wrote, how I would have rebranded JoJo so it did not flop, but stays true to her. So you see some pictures from the new music video, her new era, again, whatever costume that is. But she says, I would have finally milled the chunky as F gems and glitter that she's known for to keep the shimmer that is so personal to her brand, but find a mature way to convey the look at all of this is so cool. I love that outfit in the center with the green and purple. I would 100% wear that, love it. And that sparkly one up top, so much fun. I love glitter as much as the next girl. Here's another one. Bows are iconic to her. It is a signature to her brand. She's been wearing those huge bows for years and selling them. But this creator writes, it is so relevant in fashion right now, which is very true because Coquette is in. Would have loved for her to come out with a line of bows for her adult audience. That would have killed. That would have absolutely crushed. She then went on to say that she would keep her signature makeup style, but elevate it with pearlescent shades and more sophisticated gem placements. This is like very euphoria. Again, very in, very cool. She also said that she's known for her over-the-top maximalist jewelry. I would have pivoted more towards more mixed metal. Like, it's so cool. And it's very punk. Like, authentically so. She's always in hair reminiscent of dance competition days. I would have restyled with more slicked yet voluminous looks to give it a more mature look. Love that. Very cool. Much better than what was in the music video. Like, I genuinely like all of this. If I saw JoJo rocking all of this, I would have been like, oh my gosh, you've grown up. This is so cool. Like this really is the new era of JoJo, but you are staying true to yourself and the JoJo that all of your fans know and love. And all of her fans in the comment section of this video were obsessed with it. Somebody said, this is literally iconic. Another person said, this isn't a rebrand. It's just an adult appropriate version of her childhood style, which is great. I think that is the goal. It is still her. Like look at her house that she is still filming her podcast in right now. She is still JoJo. She still has the pink and the bows and the dolls. Like there are ways to work with that. Another person said, this is so valid. I feel like there were a hundred better ways to evolve her brand than what she did, yes. And the number one thing she should have done was just be herself and not take this whole thing so seriously. Like you are not the first child star to grow up and mature, even though you apparently think that you are. You are not inventing gay pop. You did not write this song or even create the version of it that you ended up releasing. So just sing and dance and have fun and stop trying so hard to shove it down our throats. And please just stop with the Ursula underwater gremlin outfits. Like we can do so much better. Jojo, let's redirect because this could actually be something that is very cool. Well, guys, I hope you liked that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat and on TikTok. See you guys next time. Bye.